Welcome back to Designments. So I bought myself a not so clapped out old Bridgeport milling machine because everybody needs a Bridgeport, right? A few notes. Now, I read a lot of forum threads on electrics on these and powering the power feed here, which is bizarrely 100 volt DC. There's a transformer in there, some rectification. Um, what I did find was a, a post which explained that the, this transformer here can be wired for which outputs to various controls and the that's the control box for the uh, um, the power feed motor there this can actually be wired for 220 volts, 240 volts, 415 and I think 380 if you just swap these two wires around all it does is take a feed from um, two of the, uh, the phases so you just swap those out and I've added a, um, a cable there for 220 um, single phase into there and that runs all of the controls and the um, control box for the power feed motor it does work um, in the process of adding a, um, a, a connector there so if I have to take the table off I can actually just unhook the motor um, worth mentioning that because it doesn't seem to be sort of commonly known knowledge about these um, British bridge ports so there we are um, switch that on see it fires up yeah, I've even got the uh, the 50 55 volt bulb for there bizarrely I don't really know why anyway um, today's project is the motor now this is one of the um, called kind of pancake types and they're different to the US ones and if you Google Bridgeport you'll find loads of bits about the US ones and not quite so much about the British ones but there we are um, this is an interesting motor it's um it's not your standard three phase uh, it's, it's, it's two speed this one it's got a little speed control uh, which is the box is here and you can swap it so reverse speed two speed one neutral forward speed one speed two now in my naivety I thought that that meant it was a star delta now if you don't understand that about three phase motors I'll put some links down below there's plenty of videos plenty of things on that I, I won't go into it um, basically it's a different way of wiring the windings between the phases so this has got what's called a Dallander connection so it's got six coils and it's they're all wired star but you can wire them each arm of the star either series or parallel which gives you two speeds and I think constant torque if I remember correctly anyway I'll put a link down below you can read all about that um, six wires came out I thought great and looked into it a little more and figured out that it wasn't what I wanted now the thing about sort of the star delta configuration is if you wire a three phase motor in the with three coils as you would normally have in the star configuration it will work um, on higher voltages and if you wire it delta it will work on lower voltage so you've got your um, little data plate on which explains how to swap the wiring around so you can do high or low voltage this is not that so the Dallander connection won't really work on um, three phase 220 volt when it's designed for 415 so I've had to take the motor out of the casing it isn't too hard actually there's it's still a little hot there's some little grub screws in there which actually positively locate the um, uh, the stator in the casing but it's actually a light press fit so what I ended up doing was literally just putting the casing on these um, these V blocks here and just heating it up gently with a torch and that, uh, that freed it off enough this literally once it's got kind of warm it's only a very very light press fit once it got quite warm it literally just slid out of the casing so this is what we have so what I'm trying to do here is get to the internal wiring to change the way that the um, that the coils are actually wired up so I've got a bit of a mission sort of unbinding all of this gunk that's got in here over the years I'll probably do that off camera and then I shall play about with these connections here and see if I can find anything useful without hopefully destroying it so I'll see you in a minute well after much head scratching lots of cups of tea a bit of soldering bit of internet research I've finally figured out what or how the motors wired up so I found this in the Google image search somewhere 
that is how the motor's wired. So you've essentially got, and I haven't drawn the interconnects between these, but basically what you have is, I'm gonna get a bit, bit big clive about this. So from this diagram here, you see this U1 here goes into the outside coil of here, it coils in and it comes out of the inner one there. So essentially what you we would have is U1 would be here and U2 is here. Similarly with the blue, which would be W in this case. W1 is there, W2 is there. Now, the high and low voltage thing comes back to series in parallel. So this diagram, you would be set up, depending on how you connected it, either delta or star, but again, you can, you can look that up. Um, here, this is, this is wired for high voltage delta. So you've actually got the link between it's not quite so obvious on here, but the, these these two coils, each of the pairs are 180 degrees out. Not quite so clear on there. It took some figuring out, but but there it is. You can just about see if you look at the if you look at how the coils work. See that one runs right round to there. That's the second one, and that's the inner one on that pair. And this is, they go round like that. Hopefully, you can see how it relates to that diagram. So, 180 degrees out. Here, with this wiring scheme, you've got them wired in series. So if you put 415 volts over here, so it goes in there, outside spiraled around in there, comes out of the inner set, into the outer one, around, and that's what they call the W2. Now, I've got a, a three-phase VFD, but it doesn't spit out 415 volts, it spits out three phase, 230 volts or 220 volts. So what I need to do is, and that's why I've taken all of the wires off and I've been busily um, figuring out which one of these is which. What I need to do is essentially split that link there and split these into individual coils and then wire these in parallel, each of these pairs. So it's, a, it's, a, it's gonna end up being a parallel delta connection so again I'll do that off camera hopefully you've got the idea of what's going on um, we'll put it back together and we'll see if it either blows up or it works see you in a minute just a quick clip to show you how I'm figuring out that I'm labeling these up correctly I'm referring to my drawing here and I'll label as I go and basically just it's not easy on some of these because the wires are, they're sort of bound up with this, um, I don't know what it is actually, whether it's silk or something like that. It just, it sort of binds these wires to the coils there. Um, what I'm doing is just tracing it, looking for, you can kind of see, see this one here, that definitely goes into one of the outside coils, so that'll be a, a one. And then we're looking for one of these, for example, that'll be a two. So I'm just tracing them. I've got all these labels set up on my bit of tape here. Uh, we're gonna end up with UVWXYZ because we're splitting this off into different sets of coils. But the theory is the same anyway. Um, so I'm just going through tracing them and then I'm resistance testing them. Uh, it, it's pretty easy because they're separate coils at this stage. When it's all grouped together and they're all bound up, it's quite difficult with the multimeter, but I'm getting there so I'll finish this off um, I'll probably extend these wires out put it all back into the casing with the wires hanging out so I can put it on a little bus thing and uh, we'll try connecting it up to the VFD and see what happens see you in a minute well we've got these all labeled up there's my diagram and there's all the wires with all the labels on it's been a lot of work getting to that stage, but it's worth it because I know exactly what these are now. I know what the, how the, the, mo the state is wired. I know which polarity everything's in. I know the phasing's right. So, one, that's U, two, it's V, three, it's W, four, is X, 
5 is y and 6 is z. So if we go back to this diagram here just to elaborate a little bit so you see that we've got they've labeled what I've got that would be the so let's take the red ones here because it's nice and clear so you they've got these two series up and they call they call both of these coils u so i've split that there so my scheme is u1 u2 and if we look down here the corresponding for the red so this will be x1 and that's x2 and the same for the other ones so rather than having 415 volts over two coils we've got 230 volts over two coils paralleled should work right well there's only one way to find out well I'm about to start soldering or we'll set up here but question crossed my mind so we've got these pairs of windings here now I did wonder whether we should have them as different polarities each side but if we follow the diagram here they're actually wired so you've got outside to inside to outside to inside which implies to me that if you put voltage across those they're both going to be essentially the same polarity so all we want to do is break that connect that to there and that to there and we've got the same polarity but we've got double the voltage over each of the coils which is what we want to run on a lower voltage let's give it a go got it back together got it rigged up in a well let's not talk about that um, I've got there is a proper little box for that which used to house the uh, funny rotary switch which did the sort of speed and direction switching which we're not going to use because variable frequency drive don't like the motor being disconnected while they're running so this fits on the side I'll need to add a little um, a couple of um, pillars into there just to uh, to put those on but for the moment the patches box will do and we'll go nowhere near it um, so let's explain what this is this is a it's a variable frequency drive but it's it's a very simple one so rather than having a funky LED display and all manner of bits and pieces you can do with it it's pretty simple you've got this little module here which allows you so the settings are ramp that's how quickly the motor starts mode basically selects how this little DC bus here reacts to various different things and there's various different ways you can configure it with switches for forwards reverse a little potentiometer for frequency and such like um, you can f there's the fixed frequency there which we're going to be using um, we've got 60 or 50 Hertz setting there so that setting there sets how much um, current the motor you can drive the motor with before it decides that you're in an overcurrent condition and that little button there if you modify any of these things it will go orange to say that the that those settings that don't match what's on the on the unit hit set there and boom we've got a link there this particular mode uh, if you've you've got there's 10 volt output there one two three and four four would usually be you connect a potentiometer between 10 volts and zero volts and the output from the wiper would be on number four and that would set your frequency um, number three if you jump at that one or switch that one in it just sets it to the fixed frequency which is set there so we're going to use that for the moment. I can't be bothered to boil the pot in just at the moment. We're just going to test it out and see what happens. I've got a push button here. So we're going for forwards and we're all wired up. We've got a cable here. So three and earth, we're running Delta. So there's no neutral connection. I've got it a bit at this rakish angle here because it was easy to put the motor in that way. Well, hold your breath, see what happens. <laughs> Well, look at that. Sounds smooth. As one of my favorite YouTubers would say, it works. 
cool. Well, that's kind of awesome. Uh, well, I guess it was worth the work taking the motor apart. Um, I'll put as much detail as I can down below. Uh, I'll try and find some way of sharing my drawings. Um, basically, there isn't a way to wire this motor up by by default with the, the cable arrangement it has to suit this parallel delta configuration I've got. So you do have to take the stator out and you do have to do some rewiring. But actually, it isn't hard. So I'll, I'll put as much detail as I can. Thanks for watching. Ha <laughs> ha!